Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 133rd day of Russian invasion and the ninth year of the war of Russian Federation against Ukraine. My name is Andrew Shevchenko, and from behalf of the Media Center Ukraine and Ukraine Forum, I welcome all of the journalists who are telling the world about our fight for freedom. Our guest today is Viktor Leshko, the Minister of Health Care of Ukraine. So, Mr. Minister, could you please tell what's the most recent news as of today, please? Hello, everybody. I wish you all strong health. So I will begin with horrible figures, which are done and created by the occupier country on the territory of our country, the aggressor and the terrorist country, Russian Federation. Since the beginning of the war, we have 817 healthcare facilities and units and buildings which are damaged by enemies' shells and bullets. And I may say these hospitals are not working in the technological process. To this or that extent, now we took them back to save the Ukrainians and provide medical aid. 122 institutions were fully destroyed and they cannot be restored. Uh, we need to construct new ones at these places. If we assess that in money for the recovery of the damaged institutions to the state, which they used to have before the beginning of war, we already have need 35 uh, billion 808 uh, million and uh, to uh, reconstruct uh, uh, the uh, several institutions we need 15 billion um, and uh, 14 medical employees are killed and 47 are damaged this is according to the official statistical data and those are only the employees who used to be working in the civil hospitals we understand that there is some statistics of our colleagues who were mobilized and uh, and now they are saving Ukrainians at the front line, helping our armed forces of Ukraine to protect the borders of our state. Simultaneously, the hospitals uh, are damaged and destroyed um, uh, by the occupier, as well as the ambula ambulances and emergency vehicles. 85 of vehicles of civil infrastructure ambulances um, were totally damaged. 105 uh, vehicles were kidnapped, and we don't know what's now happening with them. And also, 471 pharmacy was damaged and 43 was fully destroyed. At the territory which uh, the Russian Federation is trying to provide occupational regime, uh, we have 469 healthcare institutions. Those are the institutions of primary care and the specialized institutions of healthcare sphere. Still, still in Ukraine, the healthcare system is going on working, providing medical aid, and the program of medical guarantees is going on work. Since the beginning of the war, according to the program of medical guarantees, we have transferred more than 50 billion grivna for all of the payments to be provided, including the remuneration, which should be increased according to the decree of the president. 13,500 for nurse, 20,000 for the doctor is paid monthly according to this program for remuneration of for the doctors and medical employees and other employees of healthcare facilities we allocate in average 8 billion 700 million hryvnia this money is still paid to our doctors medical employees who are unfortunately now on the territory which are where the Russian Federation is trying to provide occupational regime, and this money is paid to the medical employees still day after day. It is becoming much harder to provide that because the terrorist country neglects all the rules and conventions, including the Geneva Convention, and tries to press onto the medical employees, forcing them to cooperate with the occupational regime. Still, I'd like to emphasize, as for the medical employees who are now on these territories, your job obligations, medical aid provision, and uh, 
medicines and fuel to provide um, uh, this aid, according to the current legislation, is not considered to be collaborationism with the occupier. So your mission is to save Ukrainians in spite of uh, being um, at the, this or that territory and whatever is happening around you. So I express my huge gratitude as the Minister of Health Care for your work that under shells, under bullets, under so uh, hard conditions, under pressure and threats, you are going on doing your work. We really highly value that, both the uh, head of our state and Ukrainians. Thank you. I would like to speak more what is happening now at the temporarily occupied territories. According to the international conventions, this is the responsibility of the occupier to provide humanitarian needs, including the health care. So how does the occupier cope with this task and do they care about that at all? Well, unfortunately, they again show that they are the terrorist country. They do not uh, comply with the conventions which are uh, adopted and acknowledged by the WHO. And the medicines uh, which need to be provided at the territories where they try to provide occupational regime, uh, this provision is critical. And today I officially declare that the Russian Federation has never opened the humanitarian corridors for us to deliver the medicines which have been procured by, for, by the state budget as the humanitarian aid from the partners with the proved efficiency which are certified and needed to be delivered to the people who were waiting for them. That is both about the medicines in the uh, inpatient clinics and the pharmacy segment, which people n used to get according to the accessible medicine, hypertension attention, uh, medicines and insulin. Now, unfortunately, it's impossible to buy them in the pharmacies and the stores of the deliveries which we made before the beginning of the occupational regime or their attempts, uh, they are now already on the verge, almost over, and we get permanent news that there is some problem with the access to the medicines and about the war crimes against humanity, where in the hospital, existing Ukrainian hospitals, they take the costly and expensive equipments and medicine and just take them out of the territory of Ukraine to a different territory, where then we cannot follow them. What can Ukrainian medicine do in this case and health care at the occupied territories? There are our citizens there who need our help. Yes, and this is the question what we are doing now. First and foremost, today this is the Red Cross, Médecins Sans Frontières, the WHO. We have permanent communication to comply with Geneva Convention and uh, to deliver the uh, it, in, incredibly important medicines to the territory where the Ukrainians need. Uh, separately, we have some of the points which we provide, but I cannot make them public now uh, because the occupiers are doing anything possible through the access to the uh, medicines to force co to cooperate with the occupier country. Are there any questions? Please. Vladislav Bohukur inform. Victor. Uh, Going on, as a follow-up question to Andrei's question, as for the situation at the temporarily occupied territories, uh, we are speaking about the situation uh, with the um, infectious diseases. Uh, we were already uh, intimidated uh, that there is the probability for some of the uh, epidemics at the territories. So can we get some of the truthful information from our people and to impact through the international community and not to allow epidemics on those territories. And another question is about the liberated territories from the occupation. Did you manage to provide the necessary level of medical provision of people, especially those who need permanent medical support and aid, uh, oncology, hemodialysis, and um, do our people anywhere have access to the access of reimbursement, which you have already partially mentioned. Thank you for the question. First of all, I wanted to say no one is scaring anyone. We are just warning about the high risks of the uh, infectious and contagious diseases because of the combat on the territory of our country, because the war has also always direct and indirect losses. As for indirect losses, we can also 
include the infectious and uh, transmissible diseases which emerge uh, because of the lack of the necessary sanitary conditions, the water supply, just the opportunity to wash your hands and to have the proper, f proper food, uh, to drinking water, to power supply, all of that can impact the possibility of the emergence of the uh, contagious disease. First of all, um, our centers on the prevention of diseases where it's possible, they provide uh, the um, uh, deeper monitoring. We have the sensitive methods of diagnostics and uh, now we have test systems uh, to um, diagnose 20 nauseologists of different infectious diseases, which allow us, these are the, uh, those researchers. For the southern uh, regions, the priority is cholera. So we monitor the symptoms uh, of the enteric diseases, intestinal diseases. We provide the hyperdiagnostics to find out whether they have cholera. During the last week, we uh, researched uh, 600 of patients. There were no cases of cholera, and we go on more monitoring the objects of the environment, including the pools and uh, water, which is used for recreation, in case if we find pathogens, microorganisms, uh, to make people aware about having any relaxation in the uh, closer to these pools. As for the occupied territories, our control and prevention centers, as well as other healthcare institutions, go on with their work, but within what we can do, because the majority of the institutions have left the occupied territories, depending on the region. In Kherson region, it's one thing, and the other hand, there is Zaporizhia region. Another question was about the recovery of the healthcare at the liberated territories. Thank you. Instantly after deoccupation, we are beginning the work, and firstly, uh, the emergency medical help never stop their work. They are working 24-7. Uh, the huge number of brigades are used uh, for everybody who needs emergency help. During the first days, it's it's always the problem with the infrastructure because the bridges were destroyed, the roads were damaged, so we need to have mm, long ways and we can't get into the therapeutic window, which is also one of the issues when we speak about indirect losses because of the actions of Russian Federation on the territory of Ukraine. We could have helped people with the st uh, um, uh, st Strokes, but we can't because there is no the opportunity to get the person to the healthcare institution which could provide medical aid. But after the occupation, we instantly speak the assess the damage of the healthcare institutions, the availability of medical employees, and if we need help, the Center of Medicine and Catastrophes of the Ministry of Healthcare has the tool with the line experts and provide help and provide with medicines. Then we have some of the special brigades going through the settlements of rural type for everybody to have access to medical aid. Of course, it won't be medical aid as it used to be before the beginning of the war, but still there's a totally different level of medical aid, not the one which used to be during the occupation. And we have the plan of recovery of Ukraine. Today, of out of more than 800 of uh, uh, institutions which were damaged, 32 are fully restored and working. If we speak about the primary medical sanitary help centers, uh, they are working in the pro pro properly equipped uh, premises, and simultaneously we begin the construction of the new inpatient institutions. Please. Thank you, Madam Chief Independent. Uh, can I ask you, so... so okay. Okay, sorry. So, um, ever since Russia has occupied Mariupol in middle of May, how, how much do we know about the humanitarian conditions there and the cholera? So unofficial reports have it that this disease is already spreading and many people have caught it. Do we know how many people have exactly caught it and do you know how many deaths, what are the estimates on deaths uh, after the occupation has begun? Uh, the 
Well, as for cholera, it is not exotic for Ukraine, and south of uh, Ukraine is endemic as for the diseases. We are always and constantly ready to respond to any cases, including cholera. We've never had a, uh, outbursts of cholera since 2011, or maybe only several uh, uh, cases which our infectious service has adequately stopped. As for Mariupol, I don't know about any cases, uh, registered cases of cholera and uh, the information which came from healthcare institutions did not witness about that but we have restricted access of communication with the medical employees who are still in Mariupol staying there. We are only in touch with the heads of the institutions who left Mariupol and in the safe conditions. As for two institutions, I will not list them, we totally lost connection with them and even today we cannot uh, get any payments for them because we are waiting for the appointment of the new superiors to restore the keys in the banking system and to begin this work. Are there any other questions in the among the journalists? Then I have a question about coronavirus. For the third year, this, this is the topic which we need to take consideration about. What's about it? Well, uh, the previous week is the first week during this period of time, during the last two months, when we register the increase of number of cases of coronavirus disease. During the last week, we registered 1,018 cases. And the week before that, we had 943 cases. So this is the growth of 12%. And this is the tendency which we can see in the European countries as well. In Europe, they register a very th uh, strong mm, uh, leap in comparison with uh, June or May. They almost doubled the cases and we are potentially getting ready to the possible new wave, the increase of number of cases of coronavirus disease. We are also preparing the healthcare system for that. There are some medicines to treat, there are some of the individual protection means which we do not measure in the numbers but in pallets because we don't even unpack them. But we just put them all over the warehouses, all over Ukraine, in case of necessity to deliver them where they are needed. But still, I urge the people, do not neglect the rules of epidemic security. If it's possible, please uh, look and update your vaccination status. In case if you didn't have the second inoculation or the booster vaccine, do it as quick as possible. We have vaccines on the territory of Ukraine, the certified of a by the WHO vaccines, so we need to get ready potentially to the possible increase of number of cases of coronavirus disease during winter and autumn. We wouldn't like that to see, of course, but we need to be ready to anything. As for the quick tests and rapid tests, for more than 1,200,000 are available in Ukraine of the tests. We have the PCR diagnoses, which are called, and we are planned new deliveries during the fall, during the autumn. So as for the diagnostics and treatment, we are ready to, uh, to the increase of the number of cases of coronavirus disease. We wouldn't like to see that, of course, but unfortunately, we we'll have to face it. And uh, we have some of the issues which will concern the logistics, logistics of oxygen, uh, because uh, some of the producers of oxygen are located on the territories with active combats. And uh, this is one of the critical points which we are working on. Oh, what what led to this growth? You said it not, no, it's not only in Ukraine, but in other European countries. Well, we don't know the reasons. The peculiarity of coronavirus disease, of coronavirus, that it emerges... It, it cannot be predicted. And everybody understands that during summer we have uh, fewer cases. The situation is calmer and... Uh, we did not analyze the number, and we had totally different, much more critical challenges in Ukraine, because we had direct threat to life. So that is why we decided to put uh, this uh, question aside. But the Europe uh, showed that there was the increase of number of cases, but there are some positive news. This increase uh, does not lead to the number of hospitalizations, which is connected that lots of people have been vaccinated. And uh, 
the protection has already been formed by the vaccines, which allows us to look into the future with optimism. But even if we register the higher number of cases, there shouldn't be additional burden on the system of healthcare. I think it would be weird to hear to the, uh, to the Ukrainians to hear about uh, coronavirus, because you said already the threats are different. But how would you characterize where we are now at in this battle with coronavirus? If we look at the long-term perspective, do we need to wait Wait for the cyclical character of coronavirus, or will this situation will develop in a different way and will be over? I think that it will be logically over and finalized. Maybe soon. I would like to hope that uh, the pandemic will be over and COVID-19 will be just a seasonal disease, and we will be getting ready to eat as much as we do with uh, acute respiratory infections, in particular uh, the October infections, which we have uh, till uh, April with flu. Do we have any other questions, please? Hello, my name's Chris, I'm a freelance journalist. Um, I have a question about baby formula. I've heard mixed reports that uh, there's a real lack of it and it's really affecting uh, mothers with newborn babies who are lactose intolerant. I'm wondering if you have any information on this. Could you please uh, elaborate what you mean by the baby formula? Of course. Um, so I've heard that there's unconfirmed reports that there's a real difficulty in sourcing baby formula right now um, for yeah. a variety. When you say baby formula, you mean? Uh, like a, a uh, alternative substance to like breast milk for a mother uh, who has a newborn baby. And so for babies who are uh, lactose intolerant, um, there's not very many options. And I'm wondering if there's any further information on this. <laughs> Well, look, today when we speak about the provision and where we have access to healthcare institutions or the social protection institutions, there is no problems about with the provision. We have public procurement and we express our gratitude to the partners who support us. It does not mean that we ask you to suspend the deliveries of humanitarian aid, including medicines and auxiliary means, because the economy of our country does not allow us today to provide all the procurement using the state budget. That is why the uh, medical equipment, the medicines uh, delivery allows us to decrease uh, the amount of what we buy using the state budget. Uh, we uh, weekly reconsider and update the list of what we need to buy because we need we have the help from our partners. We'll go on getting to our partners as for the support from the state budget, which is in deficit, or providing these or those medical um, products for us not to spend too much and to get ready to the further challenges which unfortunately are uh, we face because of the terrorist state of Russian Federation. Uh, with your news. Uh, there are reports that in occupied areas of Ukraine uh, the occupation authorities have been replacing um, Western medicines that were bought before the war with uh, the Russian analogs. Uh, in specific, uh, the stroke medicine, Altapace, with uh, the Russian Fortalitsin. Um, do you have any information on this? Thanks, China. Yes, sure. Uh, yes, I already emphasized that in my speech, uh, that uh, the country is the terrorist, and they violate both the convention and just any people's relations. They take the, away the medicines which have the evidence proof base. They took the medicines uh, from uh, the stroke uh, which are used for thrombolysis. They just took it and take them to the territory of Russian Federation. And they try to deliver the medicines of Russian production and manufacturing which are not evidence-based and are never used anywhere in the world except Russia itself, the terrorist state. But um, my cooperation with the Red Cross, with the Ministry of Healthcare, with Medicines Sans Frontières, uh, that from there 
behalf there was work on the organization of humanitarian corridors also includes that the medicines which will be delivered need to be either certified in in ukraine or in the eu countries or in the countries with a strict regulatory policy because the donations for the red cross for medicine from some frontier and to the who uh, they are given to support ukrainian people not russian economy so we will not not allow it and we consider it unacceptable any provision of the medicines um, at the behalf of the uh, UN uh, structures and missions which can be potentially bought and procured in Russia. Yes, one more, the last question today. Uh, maybe it's not that uh, high scale in comparison with the current situation, but still, as for the security and health of the citizens, it's also important. How do you assess the outcomes of the checks of street fast foods, which are taking place in the capital city now, and witness that every second uh, uh, point like this can poison us, and there were some precedents in Kiev. What's happened? Uh, do we have the high quality control, or did we ourselves relax uh, without paying attention to security and to food safety or maybe the business is trying to earn a lot on the situation when the we uh, distract ourselves uh, by the war well you already answered this question in your question but this is the comprehensible question which I cannot answer with one word I would like to urge all of you including businesses and all the Ukrainians please be conscious and take care about your health uh, if there are any slightest doubts about the quality of the food product about its security you shouldn't take it if there is such an opportunity try to get more secure food products in the certified points of delivery and distribution this was Viktor Leshko, Minister of Healthcare of Ukraine. Thank you for this conversation. Thank you for attention. Thank you for your work. This is the end of the Media Center Ukraine Forum for today. Stand with Ukraine.